What's going on everyone, Aegis B here, and I've finally been able to test out the new cinematic camera on the iPhone 13. And I figured I'd make a video talking about all the things that I like about the cinematic camera and why it's not perfect. Before I do get into the video though, I'm gonna kindly ask you guys at home to smash the subscribe button. It'll help my channel grow. And I'm also gonna be doing a full review on the iPhone 13, so just make sure to stay tuned for that. Let's get into the video. So one of the top new features and probably the major feature of the new iPhone 13 is that new cinematic mode. And that mode is available in every single iPhone 13, ranging from the 13 mini all the way up to the Pro Max. That is a pretty good thing, especially for content creators that use their phones mostly as their main photography or videography device. But I figure it's probably best to give a quick test so that you can judge how this thing looks without Apple's marketing. Run the test. That was a 30 second clip that I just quickly randomly put together using my girlfriend to go around and take photos and just filming her as she was doing it. Let me know what you guys think about how it's looking down below in the comments. Now let's get into some of the things that I like about this new cinematic mode. I think the number one thing that I'd say that I like about it is not necessarily how good it looks. It does look really good for the most part, but I think that this was a really fun feature to use. If I'm going to be looking back at some of the more recent iPhone releases, one thing that I do notice is that there's not much fun in it anymore. There's not a feature that makes it like, wow, this thing is cool to use. Like Samsung has the Z Flip with the flipping and all that stuff, so it's fun to use. But this one is that fun feature. I was at dinner with my girlfriend and her family. They asked me what's new with the iPhone and I said, not much but the cinematic mode. And I took a quick capture of them and I showed them how it looked and they were just like really excited, more excited than I was. So it is a cool feature and it is a good conversation starter. A lot of people that aren't really into photography or videography can really think that this was shot on a more expensive cinema camera or just even a pro camera. And I'm just talking about first glance. I'm not talking about going really deep into it, but if you were to take a video and show somebody else, a majority of people might think that you probably used a more expensive camera so if you're getting into filmmaking and you're on a budget then this might be a worthy upgrade because you're able to mimic a more expensive camera with just a like sub thousand dollar iphone and that is pretty priceless The cinematic mode has some perks that more expensive cameras don't have. I have pretty much a $5,000 camera setup that I'm using right now to film this video and it does not have some of the features that the cinematic mode has. And the features that I'm talking about, of course, is the feature to change the f-stop in post. Without being too nerdy, the easiest way to explain what an f-stop is, it is the way that the camera lets in more light to the lens. And also with that, the lower f-stop the more blurred the background is. So right now I'm using a 20 millimeter f1.8 and I'm shooting at f1.8. So it's like the lowest aperture setting that I can use with this lens. And that's why I get a blurred background and the lighting looks pretty solid. But if I was to use this and film a video and then afterwards wanna change the f-stop to make it look more flat and less blurry, I can't necessarily do that. But with the iPhone 13 in the new cinematic mode, I can in post on the iPhone, it's such an easy task. It doesn't take much, it's not an extra hassle. So Apple has definitely found a way to make this for filmmakers a lot easier and something that I wish camera manufacturers really would do. 
Speaking of changing things in post, another cool perk that the cinematic camera has that I really enjoy is being able to change the subject or the object that you're focusing on after you shot the footage. I can literally focus on my face and then focus on something back there and then jump between the two objects quite easily. But again, this is not a feature that you get on a more expensive camera. Not to mention the iPhone 13 is super light and easy to carry around. So if you're getting into videography or making films or even just content creating on your phone, you're not gonna need to carry around a really expensive rig and worry about breaking your back all the time because of all the expensive camera equipment that you're gonna be carrying. You're gonna be able to do it with like a 699 iPhone and get some really good looking footage. But I do want to talk about some of the things that are not great at all with the cinematic camera on the new iPhone 13. And the main thing that I should talk about is the fact that it doesn't necessarily get focus 100% of the time. If I was to take some footage of a human being that's sitting right in this chair or something like that, or even just moving around towards me, it's mostly gonna get the focus like 90% of your face and your body and all that. It's gonna look pretty solid. Other objects such as cars or like just larger objects, it's definitely going to get the focus. And by get, I don't mean nail it 100%. I just mean it's going to be able to isolate you from your background. If you're going down to like smaller items with different random objects, then the cinematic camera sucks. It misses focus a lot of the times for certain things. In this clip here, I was filming just some berries that I found at a local park and it was definitely not in focus a lot of the times. And I got like a halo effect on some of the footage that I was taking. Also this clip where I just am um, filming my hands, you can literally zoom in and see like a outline of my hand, which is obviously not there in real life. So it's adding like a halo effect on certain things, but also it's not in focus. So that can be a problem. And the good thing is yes, you can edit it in post, but it still looks pretty artificial. For humans, a lot of the time I've noticed that when if somebody has long hair or just something on their head or something like that, it might not get the outlines perfectly. And a lot of people know this already because they use the portrait mode on their iPhone and that has similar issues as the cinematic camera. But the reason why it's not necessarily always in focus is because of the A15 chip. It is a computer and for now at least it's never going to be able to separate you from your background perfectly, 100% perfectly, because it's just a computer chip. Besides the focusing and halo issue, another big issue that I have with the cinematic camera is that it's not in 4K. Apple stuck it to 1080p, which means that it's not going to be like the absolute best footage that you can even shoot on the iPhone because even that has 4K footage. But overall, I can definitely say that the cinematic mode on the new iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 in general is just a great filmmaking tool at this point. It's not something that I can personally use as my main videography device and remain camera, but that's just my preference. A lot of you might be able to get away with this as your main camera, especially if you're just doing quick clips and you just want to impress your friends. You can't go wrong with the cinematic mode. Let me know what you guys think of the footage in the comments down below. And also if you have any questions about the camera, let me know as well down below because I'm doing the full review, which is coming soon. So I will definitely incorporate your questions into that video coming this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.